everyone. Welcome back to Horizon Hobbies Thursday Thunder. Got a bunch of stuff on the slate, so we're going to try to roll quickly because there's something for everyone in this episode. Oh, we, yeah. we promise. We wanted to bring out the big bad boy first. 5T 2.0. Yep. I know there's been a little bit of rumblings. People have been kind of thinking it's coming. Here it is. Scott, you want to talk about this a little bit? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the king, <laughs> the king is back as we're kind of <laughs> dubbing it here in the, here in the shop. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, basically 2.0. Uh, version of the 5T is going to come bind and drive, like you had mentioned. Mm -hmm. So basically, no transmitter in the box. You get to bind your Spectrum radio, whatever one you have mm -hmm. with this. comes with a telemetry receiver okay. in there, so it's ready to go. So uh, like if you have a 6R, what's really cool is, um, as you can see, it's nice and dirty because we were playing with it yesterday. Um, it's really cool on the 6R. You could actually hook up all your telemetry and see your RPM, right. your engine temps. That was really neat. I've never done that before with that radio, so it's neat to see that. Mm -hmm. um, some new things that we have for this one is um, the big thing you'll notice right away is a big, giant hood scoop, mm -hmm. which is cool because you could let a little bit more air in there, directs it almost right directly on the servo. So let's the servo run a little bit cooler. Uh, brand new LED light bar, okay. which is really neat. Kind of, we've been kind of putting that light bar, the LED stuff on all of our off-road stuff. Right. That's really cool. People are really digging that. Um, you got a little bit bigger motor in there to cool or something? Yes, we have a 32 <laughs> cc Zenoa. People are gonna love that. Yes, plenty of horsepower. Mm -hmm. um, it was, you know, we were breaking it in, and it was like two pulls, and it was started. It was pretty amazing Ooh. how quick it was, and idled like a champ, ran like a champ the whole time we ran. Um, uh, starting from the front to back, there's a new steering rack in it. Mm -hmm. Gives you a little bit a little bit more settings, a little improved steering. Okay. I know the, the trucks tend to push a little bit, and now it just carves in okay. really well. Yeah. Um, a lot of that also has to do with uh, there's a new center diff location. It's kind of moved over a little bit, and it improves the entire driveline okay. angle. Makes it more like a true four-wheel drive. Versus it's kind, kind of, of like driving. what we've been doing with the 8 Series, Correct. just making it a more balanced Correct. drive. Correct, exactly, exactly. Um, there's braces from the throttle servo directly to the center diff. Okay. So it actually um, keeps that, when you're applying all the brace in the fifth scale, it kind of tweaks the servo. This kind of prevents that okay. from happening. Um, yeah, and then you see new trim scheme. <laughs> so this one is considered the blue trim scheme. Okay. And then, as you'll see here, this is going to be considered the yellow okay. trim scheme, so you guys can kind of see that there. So two options available, scoop. which is good. Yep. Yep. And you said updated body. Um, will the old body work on this if a guy has one already, just have a spare? Do, have we tried that yet? Yes. Okay. And in all actuality, so this, the yellow body I just showed you, that is the new cage and new body. Okay. And we wanted the spare one, so this is actually the old cage Ooh. with the okay. new body on there. So That's good. Um, there's a little bit different mounting system in here. Um, there's aluminum pieces on that one. This one doesn't have those. Okay. So other than that, yeah, your old cage can, you can do that and have like a practice body, right. a race body, exactly. stuff like that. Cool. And... I know everyone's going to ask, when are these going to be available? Uh, October. Okay. So, so not too far. You're, if, so if you get it, you're still going to have plenty of time to run it before, you know, or at least for us in the Midwest before the snow comes. <laughs> They'll and, be running out west all year. Oh, so. yeah. Oh, yeah. And I've seen these run in snow, and I think we've run them in snow a few times. So, yep. uh, yeah, this one you don't really need to put away at all. Perfect. Um, and then do we have a price? Uh, thirteen ninety nine Street. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so it's right at the same price as the 5T now, but mm -hmm. like I said, um, this one is bind and drive, so it doesn't come with the radio, so right. that kind of why the price is the same. Okay, perfect. And um, we'll, hopefully we'll drop in some interior oh, yeah. photos Definitely. during this. Um, they got a little dirty trying to do the video, <laughs> of course. Um, so uh, we'll let Scott go. Hopefully we'll have some pictures and videos to show you guys. But everything's going to be on horizonhobby.com, yep. towerhobbies.com. And uh, stay tuned. Like I said, we have a ton more stuff coming, so uh, stay with us. Thanks. And welcome back. We're now joined by another Derek, Derek Sockleben from Blade. I do. And last week we announced a new Inductrix product. Yep. This week we're announcing another new Inductrix product. What yep. do we have sitting here? So this one's a little bit different than what we announced last mm -hmm. week. Uh, this is actually the Inductrix FPV BL or brushless. So this is something that we in the Blade team and I think a lot of people in the community are going to be really excited yep. about. Um, it's always been a really tough challenge to make a product in this size with brushless motors, especially a quad. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've had the Inductrix line around for a while. We've had you know, the original Inductrix, the Inductrix FPV, right. and so on. Um, and those all have brush motors. Mm -hmm. And kind of the sweet spot there is it has you know, brush motors are very light. 
uh, but they're efficient in what they do in a product that size. Uh, so we spent a lot of time developing this one and uh, finding some motors and really developing a new board and an ESC because mm -hmm. you have to have a different ESC right. uh, for a product like this. So what we were able to do is come out with this form factor of a product in brushless motors that makes a world of difference when it comes to uh, flight performance, power, and uh, efficiency, durability, and, and so on. Um, another big improvement that we made to this is this is an entirely new frame design. Okay. So uh, you'll notice here, and it, it's kind of clear on a white table, so it's difficult to see, uh, but <laughs> you'll notice go. that there's kind of an octagonal um, uh, design around the ducts. Now, the inner ducts it, are circular, uh, the way they have been, but adding kind of these these corners to it, what we found is that it's a lot more rigid and a lot more durable, uh, and it pr really prevents the uh, the ducts there from from flexing. Okay. So extremely durable frame. Moving the motors to the bottoms made a big difference to that. A uh, couple other really cool features about this that we've integrated is a uh, forward programming or channel changing BTX. Okay. So the video transmitter here, actually you can program from straight from your transmitter. So you just go into, in a Spectrum Gen 2 transmitter, you just go in, okay. select your channel, select your band, um, and hit send, and it'll change the channel on there. It's got a lot Perfect. of cool features that we've integrated in like the Inductrix Plus, so it has a uh, you know color changing LED here on the back. I kind of chose the little uh, baby blue, sky blue one right. there for the video. Uh, it also has meow mode, which is a big thing. Yes. Uh, so you can flip <laughs> over, and actually we could probably do that now. So I'll go ahead and turn it over here and just kind of give you this an example. This might be new to people, so it is good to right. show. So the meow mode, basically, if you flip <laughs> over in a crash, you know, typically with a quad, you're not going to be able to get back up. you got to get up and walk. Right. But with meow mode, you sit here and you just hold the... Uh, <laughs> Hold the bind button or the arm the, button there. There's a little bit of power there. <laughs> there is. And it that was an up. aggressive meow mode. That was like tire mode. It's brushless motors. It's <laughs> brushless motors. So, yeah, so it flips right back over, mm -hmm. uh, pop right back up, and you can get flying again without having to get out of your seat, which I know a lot of people appreciate, especially right. if you're flying in your house. So. Right. And now uh, this comes as a bind and fly basic? Bind and fly basic, okay. yep. So it comes uh, 1S, so it takes the 1S500, which is the um, which is the same battery that we had in the Inductrix Plus. Okay. Uh, so it's got the bigger connector, mm -hmm. you know, 500 milliamp hours, uh, more than enough to get, you know, anywhere four to five minutes of flight time. Okay, of that's this, actually, so. I was just going to ask, since it's got a little bit more power, yep. if that affects the runtime at all. Oh, yeah. yep. Cool. And then um, when are we going to see these available? So these will be available by the end of the month. Uh, okay. We're looking to ship them before the end of September. Okay, so perfect. Be so here pretty quickly. September. Awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, did we cover price? I can't remember. Price, yeah, that's another big thing <laughs> on this. Uh, so the price on this is going to be one forty nine ninety nine map. Okay. Uh, so really affordable for uh, for all the features that we packed into this and mm -hmm. the brushless motors. So awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is great. Um, it's awesome seeing two inductors in a row just in time for like the holiday season. Oh, yeah. This is going to be perfect for for guys, yep. beginners, I would assume, and Intermediate flyers as well. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's got safe mode. It's got right. uh, a couple, you know, an advanced mode. It's got a nicely tuned acro mode. So with the brushless motors, it's much more capable outdoors. But it does have that safe mode for the beginners that uh, kind of just want to fly around the house. And yeah. indoor season's coming up. It's starting to get cold. Now we're waking up to like 60 degree that. days here. So Derek's already talking about ice. This Derek's <laughs> talking about yeah, whatever. Uh, we'll let we'll let you guys go. We got one more thing coming up. So stay tuned. Uh, thanks again. Stick with us. Thank you. And finally, we are now joined by Jason Merkel from eFlight with a new eFlight release. Jason, what do we have sitting here for us? Yeah, this is actually pretty exciting. So a lot of people probably recognize this. Part of why I'm wearing this shirt today is actually <laughs> Spirit Week at Horizon. Um, today's actually a very special day in the U.S., uh, but also um, it's this is an iconic U.S. aircraft. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people recognize this that have been flying for a long time. This airplane, I think, originally flew about uh, 75 years ago. This is the Pitts S1, mm -hmm. and uh, the design has been around ever since then. It really hasn't changed much. There's an S2, which is a two-seat variant. This is the single-seat variant. Uh, but this airplane is an airplane that when I was growing up, I used to go to air shows and I would see these fly and I was really amazed by the full-scale aircraft. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in the model world, there weren't a lot of them because they were kind of hard to fly. And so I saw some giant scale ones that flew pretty good, but when there were some smaller ones in this scale, uh, I remember a couple of companies had some ARFs around 40 size, a little bit bigger than this, but they were very squirrely, very hard to fly. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's kind of what the Pitts is for. The Pitts is an aerobatic airplane. It won the World Aerobatic Championships many a time because it was so capable of aerobatics. It's very snappy, very maneuverable. Right. Um, it's got it's a very short moment. Uh, it's got short kind of coupled 
control surfaces and everything like that. And so, you know, it's a challenge to make one fly well. And so many years ago, we released our E-Flight UMX pits, and I think we blew everybody away with that thing. And I was, <laughs> honestly, before I flew, I heard everyone's like, dude, you got to fly this little UMX pits. It flies amazing. I'm like, yeah, whatever. It's a pit. It's probably going to fly, you know, really squirrely. But no, I was blown away. In fact, we have one here where we have landing gear on top of it. There's a full-scale one out there where they actually land upside down. Hmm. And I was blown away that you can actually land that thing upright and upside down without it snapping out. Uh, and so we decided, because of the popularity of that airplane, to scale it up to a larger park flyer. And uh, what you might notice is it looks like it's small. This is an 850 milli uh, millimeter wingspan. Okay. It's a biplane, so really the effective wingspan is quite a bit larger than what you see here. So it's kind of like a, one of our 1.2 meter size airplanes, okay. 1.3 meter size airplanes. It's about that class and category of airplane. And so uh, we blew it up to a size where it's easy to transport in one piece. You don't really have to take this thing apart to transport it. If you want to, though, it doesn't take any tools. There's a little clip on the bottom here. We can take this clip off, and there's some pins in the wing. There's no screws. There's no uh, screwdriver right. required, no uh, you know, special Allen wrench or anything like that. So you can remove the tools in just a few minutes if you want to, which for a biplane is, is really convenient. A lot of times biplanes are a lot of work to take together and put apart at the field. Mm -hmm. But again, honestly, with the size of this thing, it's just right. You don't have to even take it apart. You put it in your front seat, maybe seat belt it in, <laughs> and take it to wherever you want to fly. And, I mean, you'll be able to fly it in a lot of places that you wouldn't be able to fly a lot of other similar-sized airplanes. Uh, and one of the things that we did was the full scale has quite a bit of power. The ones I think they sell now, it's still being sold to this day. I believe they're 200-horsepower engines. And so it's a pretty small airplane with a big engine in the front. It's got a lot of power. Right. In the standard configuration, with the way it comes out of the box, we've got a power system that's set up for 3S and 4S, which is kind of a common theme in a lot of our airplanes now. And the mm -hmm. reason for that is because we know guys want – Really good power on 3S and insane power on 4S, right. and that's what this thing has. It's really, it's it's better than scale power on 3S, but on 4S it's freaking ballistic. <laughs> it's amazing. I love it. Just watching it blast off vertical, it's unbelievable. So you can actually hover it. Uh, it's not a super easy airplane to hover because of the short tail moment and things like that, but mm -hmm. it can be done, uh, which is something we wouldn't have done with Pitts airplanes, you know, 15 years ago. Right. But this one, the guys did a really good job of keeping the scale outline for the most part, tweaking a few of the design elements to make sure that it flies better than average, make sure that a guy that's not super duper experienced is going to be able to fly this and enjoy flying it. Uh, and so in, inherently, it's a just a super smooth flying, relatively easy to fly airplane on low rates. It's kind of nice and smooth, flies like a, a kind of a sporty biplane would. You can do some basic aerobatics, but if you crank the throws up and you'll see in our product video, this thing does wicked snaps. Um, and awesome, like Lomschavox, things like that. Things that, you know, uh, kind of the old school 3D or, or old school aerobatics before 3D that we used to do. <laughs> and I really love that about it. It's kind of like a, you know, kind of a, a step back in time to classic aerobatic style of flying. Um, but it's also relatively easy to land. Uh, you can take off and land in uh, grass, on pavement. It's got nice durable uh, landing gear. It's got nice durable plastic wheel pants. Mm -hmm. We got the scale spinner, really, again, scale shape. We've got um, a lot of the scale detail, like the uh, ribs molded into the wing here we got some yep. panel lines and rivets and things like that oh uh, we got a nice little cockpit here which this is the battery hatch by the way um it's set okay. up to again accept a 3s usually 2200 uh, or 4s 1800 to 2200 you can use some maybe bigger and smaller batteries depending on if it'll still cg appropriately mm -hmm. but i think most guys are going to fly with like a three cell 2200 or a four cell 2200 nice four little magnetic snap there with yeah the yeah i got a, i love <laughs> that no tools required for that it's really nice there's a battery tray in there which makes it convenient because the battery does have to be up closer to the nose okay. to CG correctly, and we've got a nice removable tray in there. Something we've done on our other airplanes. Ooh. So you put the battery on that, and then you slide that into the airplane. Pretty so sweet. it's super convenient, super easy, uh, a lot of fun to fly. We've got the Binafly Basic version, which comes with AS3X, which okay. really smooths things out, especially in the wind, and safe, safe select. And so for a guy who maybe is a little bit unsure if he's ready for an airplane like this, you turn safe select, select on, no problem. Mm -hmm. With safe select on, you've got the uh, the pitch and bank angle limits. You've got self-leveling when you let yep. go of the stick. You can put that on a switch. You can turn it on and off. Uh, and so I know a lot of guys say, I don't want that. No problem. That's why it's safe select. You yep. don't, if you bind it normal, you don't have safe select. No big deal. Uh, you have AS3X. That's locked in. Of course, you can adjust that if you buy the program, but I don't think you're going to need to do that. Our guys spend a lot of time fine-tuning the AS3X on this. Um, and then if you're, again, a less experienced pilot, or even for me as an experienced pilot, I still like having safe select. I bind with it every time because with it bound and turned on, I have the option to just flip the switch to turn safe yep. on if I want to hand the radio.
often somebody has had a lot of experience. Maybe if I lose orientation in the sun and I want to, you know, gain my composure again, I can flip it into safe select, and I have a few minutes to, or a few seconds to react um, before it hits the ground or anything like that. So, and also it makes it a lot easier to take off and land. It keeps the wings level for you. So it, even if it's crosswind. It's nice because the plane's not blowing around, and you're not having to work really, really hard on the ailerons to keep the thing on track. You can focus a little more on the rudder to keep the thing online uh, and use the elevator to flare when you need to. So it's a lot easier to take off and land with safe select. It doesn't hurt to have it. But again, if you don't want it, no problem. And then if you don't want any of that, we do have the plug-and-play version. Mm -hmm. Plug and play version is just a standard four channel airplane, just needs a standard four channel receiver. Cool. Uh, you can fly it with a, a four channel transmitter, although most people have a five or six channel right. transmitter these days. The bind and fly basic version, if you want safe select, does require a five channel transmitter. Okay. So that is something that guys need, need to be aware of. Uh, nothing special there. The, the bind and fly basic version is $199. So okay. $199 US. Um, it, it is uh, kind of a, a good value for everything that you're getting here. Good size airplane, 3S and yep. 4S, very powerful power system. Um, all the really convenient features of the easy to remove and, and, and install wings, that kind of thing. Yep. Uh, the plug and play version available for $179.99. It's about $20 less, okay. $180 US. And it will be available the end of this month. It's around the end Ooh. of September. It's already on the way to us when you guys are seeing this video. Um, and so, <laughs> but again, as I've mentioned before, a lot of times our first shipments sell out very quickly. So if you want, one, make sure you pre-order yes. right away at your favorite local hobby shop, favorite online retailer, yep. horizonhobby.com, towerhobbies.com. Get that pre-order in to make sure that you get one from the first shipment so you can still enjoy it here at the kind of tail end of summer going into yep. fall weather. Uh, it's a great time to fly an airplane like this. and A lot of fun, really good looking airplane mm -hmm. um, that I think a lot of guys are going to enjoy us having in our lineup. Very cool. I think Jason pretty much nailed it there. Um, I'd ask you more stuff, but I think that pretty much covered <laughs> it. Uh, We'll let you guys go. As always, uh, we've been still doing that thing where we flip on the product videos before we do the Thursday Thunder. So if you're subscribed on YouTube, you get a little Easter egg sneak peek of all this beforehand. So uh, thanks again. Make sure you like, comment, share, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Same time, same place as always. Thanks again. Thank you.